I've never felt the Cowboys are poorly run. But this draft was interesting. I always felt they were a little odd and insular. But um, they had Kayvon Thibodeau as their best player in the draft. That is fine. Jerry showed his draft card. But I thought that move was kind of desperate and weird. And one of the things I've always respected about New York media, L.A. media, and Dallas media, and, and Chicago, big city media, you're willing to hammer on local teams and local personalities. Dale Hansen was known for that for years. Is that I heard multiple clips from Dallas media, Matt, hammer in that first pick. So take me take me to the ground floor of this thing. It, it looked weird. They were the most penalized offensive line. They drafted the most penalized offensive lineman. It felt like from an outside perspective, they got they got kicked in the butt a little bit by the locals. Yeah, I think that did happen. And what's happened in the local media, and it happened in those other places you mentioned too, is and it's a little ridiculous. We now have these armchair scouts. And they watch <laughs> tons of film. And I mean, I think you and I have the same thought. It's like have, you know, Cosell or have somebody sort of do that for you. Let's not try to pretend that we know all this. What's happened, at least in Dallas, maybe some other cities, too. I'm sure it's happening everywhere, is that everybody's become an expert. And interestingly, with this player, suddenly all these people that watch all this film and sort of claim now to be amateur scouts, had this guy with like a third round grade. And what happens is the listeners and everybody sort of buy into that. Oh my gosh, this guy I listen to all the time or listen to his podcast or read had him as a third round grade. The, the one thing I'll say on the Cowboys behalf, I mean, it is kind of funny. I'm willing to beat up Jerry for a lot of things. We, 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 but we sort of like give Belichick and a lot of it's because of what he's done. We always give him the benefit of the doubt. It's like, well, yeah, he picked that guy two rounds earlier than everybody thought, or he picked this guy way earlier. I mean, the first two picks for the Patriots came about two rounds earlier than everybody thought. But <laughs> Belichick sort of, and but one of those was a Baylor guy, my alma mater, number 50 uh, in, in the draft was uh, Tyquan Thornton. But it, it's fascinating. But when the Cowboys, of course, have conviction about a player. Now, here's, the, here's what I've gathered, though, from talking to other things that at least – a little bit pushback against everybody hammering on this pick. The Cowboys were not alone. And maybe the Cowboys were not alone in overvaluing this guy. But yeah. it, it, I didn't – sometimes I go around the league and talk to some scouts and everything, and they'll immediately, like, make fun of the Cowboys. This guy's an injury. And it's, it's funny how, how much these guys know. Some of these scouts, they'll go – the, years ago, Cowboys took a third-round pick. It was their first pick of the draft. It was a guy named uh, Brewster from Ball State. Some guy said he'll, he'll get hurt immediately. And I said, well, he never missed a game in college. What do you mean? This guy's off his tackle. He's never missed a game. He'll get hurt immediately. And he went in the weight room and popped a peck. And he, he never played a down for the Cowboys. He was their first-round pick that year. It's, it's remarkable, the medicals they know and what they figure out. What the Cowboys have decided – and I, and I sort of halfway applaud them for this. They think this is Tyron, uh, Tyron Smith's replacement and that he could be a great tackle, even though he's not a great replacement at left guard right now, which is what right. they need. They need somebody to replace Connor Williams. And they're getting a guy that is heavily penalized like Connor Williams. But their vision of this guy is a longtime left tackle who has rare trait has, for his size can do things in bending and getting in pass, you know, uh, pass blocking can do like remarkable things. Like they think that's what he's going to become. So they're basically saying we'll bite the bullet for a year or two because we think this guy could be a great left tackle. I, you know, I, I see of something though, the last three years, uh, the Jones family has had some personal drama uh, the Cowboy organizations had a couple ugly stories within it. And in that same period the last two years, they have taken a half a dozen players, Matt, in drafts with massive red character flags. I've been told this by other teams. 
this is what would worry me is that are they comfortable with a level of dysfunction because they're living through it in their own business? I, I'm serious that I know like I know three or four front offices really, really well in the NFL. And then I have six or seven others I'm reasonably close to that I talk to the GM or or at the scouting director. And the overriding theme on the Cowboys' last two to three drafts is, man, they're taking some some guys with character stuff. And then I look at the organization and the family, and I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of drama all around it. And I think to myself, are they getting a little too comfortable with it? Is that a fair criticism, or have they been doing that for 20 years since you covered them? Yeah, they've been doing it for 20 years. And I don't think it's changed. I think Jerry's always loved the thought of he felt like people took a chance on him and he was at some tough places in life. And he's always loved, like, if you can get either an injury risk or a character risk for tremendous value, he's all about it. This is a weird one, though, because they have a guy that was involved in a drive-by shooting death, murder, that's a second-round pick from last year. And it, it's almost like Jerry's just defying everybody. I know you're all looking at me. And now the case against the, the, the Ole Miss defensive end that they took, Sam Williams, was thrown yes. out. But still, red flags, there's a reason he was there. I, and, and I don't think, like Randy Gregory – may turn out to be i mean he's already shown he was a first round caliber player but he had yeah. all these issues and they've dealt with all that and then they end up losing him anyway jerry can't help himself he loves the thought and maybe it's the old oil and gas part of him he loves the thought of just out foxing people yeah i he it, it and it all goes back to charles haley it it goes back to taking a a, a huge locker room issue from San Francisco and that helped them win, you know, a couple more Super Bowls or maybe three of them. But it he took someone else's problem and that guy was tremendous for the Cowboys. And as an oil person, you know, an, an oil and gas guy, like he just doesn't remember the failures. He, right. he only remembers like the successes. Yeah. And so. That's a that's that, I think that's what he always comes back to. Now, the family stuff that you're bringing up is interesting. They're they've never really shied away from family drama. The only thing different here is this has just gotten a lot more public. And uh, so I, I don't know. I I think it could be a positive that they have like more kids in the room now to make make picks and help them.